Good afternoon guys, I just want to share with you one of the most valuable pieces of wisdom from Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and it is this, private victory must come before public victory, and for me this means we have to possess ourselves, we have to possess our mind, control and master that before we can share that and expect anything else around us to change. So before our public situation changes, before our relationships with people change for the better, we have to win ourselves. We have to conquer ourselves through the power of our mind and our thoughts. And so I challenge you to think about your life. When something happens and get ready. It might be today, right now, something outside of you, some, someone does something or says something. Remember, you're the one that gets to choose that response. Have a great afternoon, everyone. You have to be super clear about what kind of company you're trying to build, what your approach is. What are the habits that are gonna help you actually accomplish your goals? If you do something in a new way, and I don't care what it is, people are initially going to misunderstand it relative to the traditional way. Rise and shine, it's Espresso time. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I am not a morning person, I'm not, but when you start your day off with a powerful routine that inspires you for success, like watching one of these videos, it will change your life. So let's start your day off right together, grab your coffee, know that I believe in you, and get ready for a shot of Espresso from Jeff Bezos. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. Warren Buffett has this great quote. He says, you can hold a rock concert, and that's okay. And you can hold a ballet, and that's okay. Just don't hold a rock concert and advertise it as a ballet. Investors come in all shapes and sizes. They have different investment horizons, different approaches, different uh, beliefs about what the right kind of portfolio uh, looks like. And uh, so it's not one, you know, people use Wall Street as a shorthand, but there isn't one type of investor. They come in all shapes and sizes. And you have to be super clear about what kind of company you're trying to build, what your approach is. We laid that out in our 1997 annual shareholder letter. We said we were going to take big bets. We said they were going to fail. We said some of them hopefully were going to work. Uh, we said we were going to invest for the long term, that we were going to uh, try to take advantage of mar market opportunities as they arose. And there's a certain kind of investor who is aligned with that approach. And so, again, you can hold the ballet or the rock concert, and both can work. Um, just be clear about which one you are, and then people can self-select. People are remarkably bad at remembering long lists of goals. Clarity comes with simplicity. Brendan Burchard from page 159 of Built to Serve. I think this is the case for most entrepreneurs. We make these giant lists of things that we need to do. 
Tell me if this sounds familiar. You've got this giant list of to do's that just you seem to keep adding to every day. A new idea comes another thing for your to do list or you go through an exercise of your core values and you've got 13 core values this is one of my favorite. You look at big companies and and their list of values and there's so many values. Think of your own core value. Have you done that core values exercise on your website? How many core values are there? If you can't remember your goals, if you can't remember your core values, if it doesn't come off the top of your head right away, it means you're not living them. It means you're not executing them. It means you don't have clarity and you're trying to be everything. You're trying to do too much. And as a result, nothing happens. I was just on a call today helping uh, some people in John Astraff's VIP group. And we're talking about YouTube strategies and making content and in a woman, beautiful woman came on and said, I don't know what to do. I've got so many ideas. I've got so many videos I want to make and I haven't posted a video in five months because I feel like whatever I make is going to box me in. So well, who's boxing you in? Nobody's boxing you in. You're boxing yourself in. You've got so many ideas. You've got so many potential videos that you could make. And that feels overwhelming to the point where you're not doing anything you haven't posted in, in five months on your channel, right? That's a big problem. And we get overwhelmed. We get overwhelmed, we get frustrated. There seems to be an abundance of opportunities and that paralyzes us. That's the problem. And the way to get through it is to actually get the clarity, to get more focused, to get more narrow, to say, this is what I'm about. This is my real goal. This is really who I want to become. I'm not about 13 things. I'm about this one most important thing. And when you get that clarity, it allows you to go so much faster as opposed to being pulled in a million different directions. So today I want to guide you through the passion process that's in Built to Serve, right here, right next to the Brendan Burchard quote page, what is this, 158, the passion process that uh, I wrote in this book, thanks to Nina, thanks to my wife and helping her figure out what she's passionate about and how to turn that into something that she can be proud of. Okay, so if you're struggling to figure out what are you passionate about, how can you get narrow, laser-like focused to give you the confidence, momentum and guidance that you need to start building that into your life and business, this is it, passion process, okay? Step number one, here's what we're gonna do. Make a list of all the ways that you've helped people. Understand that if you wanna be happy, you're built to serve, right? It's here in the title, you are built to serve, you wanna help people. So make a list of all the ways that you've helped people because at the core of every successful business is helping people. Any entrepreneur, this is a good test to see how much entrepreneurs care about their business. If you ask an entrepreneur, what do they do? And they answer with, I help people X, that's usually a good start. It's usually a sign the entrepreneur is thinking about it the right way. Because if you want to have success in business, it comes by giving value to other people. At the core of what you're doing is you're helping people. You're helping consumers, you're helping businesses, you're helping. You're bringing value, you're helping them. So if you're struggling to figure that out, or if you already started your business and you're struggling to get that clarity on what to focus on next, make that list. Step number one, make a list of all the ways that you have helped people. Make a list, just make a list. Think of 20, 30 different things that you've done to help people. Some of that may seem really insignificant, but it still made you feel good. So how have you helped people? Okay, that's step number one. Step number two, underline the activities you've enjoyed. Okay, so one of the biggest challenges that people face when they're doing their business is they focus on the end result. You liked the end result of helping somebody. You like that you help them. You like that they're happy. You like that they're gaining momentum. You like that spending time with you made some kind of impact on them, right? We like we like that feeling. We like knowing that we served and we contributed to them. But you like the end result, not necessarily the process. And so now that you have your list of all the ways that you have helped people, what did you actually enjoy the process of doing? If you look at all the videos that I've done on this channel, and on all my channels, the number one rule for success is you have to like the process. The people who win, the people who succeed at the highest levels, they like the process. They like the actual work, the actual doing. In my presentation today to John's group, we did what it was supposed to be an hour and I think it went two plus hours and I only spoke for maybe 15 minutes to set the stage. And then it was Q and A and me helping and me bringing value. And John wanted me to promote my Brandlytics training program. And, you know, he mentioned it a couple of times, but 
if the goal was just, I'm going to come on here and sell Brandlytics, that's the outcome, right? I want people to get into my training program. The goal for me wasn't that. The goal for me was to actually like helping the people. So that's why we spent way longer than I was supposed to be scheduled. We still had questions, people raising their hands at the end because they had more questions for me. Because I actually like the process of going through somebody's YouTube channel and giving them feedback. Or I like the process of somebody having doubt in themselves and by having a quick conversation with me, I can inject them with that little bit of belief, hope, encouragement. That's all they need to have permission to go and start filming some content. It's my favorite thing to do. I love helping entrepreneurs and I love the process of doing those Q and A's. If you were to move to a new city or set up a new office, I could come and help you. I could help you unplug all your computers and plug them back in, in the other spot and pack up the boxes and help rent the truck and all of the stuff that it takes to move an office. And I would love the end result of that, that you got your new office set up but I don't like the process of doing it. I don't like unplugging computer cables and plugging them back in and making sure the tech is going and packing up boxes and all that. I don't actually like the process. So you get the end result, which is great, but you don't like the process. And so that's a really important distinction that most people never make. Say, well, I like doing this. Do you actually like doing that? Or do you just like the end result of what you did? is the reward itself in the process. The reward for me of going in and helping John's group isn't how many people sign up for my program, it's that I got to touch some people today. And I know that some people are now gonna go off and make videos and they were inspired and moved by the workshop that we did. From learning from me, but also from the awesome people who are in the group that they connected to each other just a little bit more because I showed up. That's the process. So when you make your list of all the things that you love doing, Underline the ones that you actually like the process of doing, that you can get lost in the process of doing, that you could do that for eight hours and the time just kind of flies, where other things, eight hours, maybe feels like 16 hours because <laughs> you hate it so much. So on your list, it's really, 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 really important to get that distinction that most people miss. What do you actually enjoy the process of? Okay. And then set number three is you're going to narrow it down to your top three choices. So if you're trying to figure out what is that? You're, what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want clarity on? What, what is the life that you want to build, the business that you want to build, you want to get known for, you want to help, you want to serve, you want to narrow that down? You start with figuring out how you like to serve people. You start with figuring out by underlining the ones you enjoy the process of, and then you narrow it down to your top three, and that's what you focus on. It doesn't mean that you can't do the other things. It doesn't mean that, that the other things aren't going to work for you. But trying to do 20 things means nothing gets done. You make this giant list of things that you can do, amazing. And then tomorrow you look at that list and you're overwhelmed because it's too much. And it paralyzes you and prevents you from taking action. The only thing you're missing is momentum. You narrow it down to your top three ideas and then you start executing on them. That passion process works for any goals. That's a business context. If you want to use it in the health context, right? You want to, you want to work out, you want to get fitter. Okay, great. Same thing. Number one, where have you enjoyed working out before? Where have you, where have you had any kind of results in health or fitness, whether it's diet, whether it's exercise, where have you gotten some results, right? Write that down. Next, you underline, what did you actually enjoy the process of? Did you like going to the gym or did you like playing soccer? Or did you like going on that diet? Or did you like, right? What did you actually like doing? And then circling the top three, and then that's what you focus on. Because if you hate going to the gym and going on a treadmill, and you hate doing it, you will force yourself to do it for so long, and then, and then you're gonna quit because you hate doing it. But if you love playing soccer with your friends, or you love playing badminton or basketball or baseball or whatever, whatever your sport of choice is, or you just love, going for a run with your friends or going for a walk with somebody else. You know, that connection becomes important to you and you actually like doing it. And it feels like that hour long soccer game is easy and just flies by, but 20 minutes on a treadmill, it feels like you hate your life. Then go play more soccer, right? We tend to overcomplicate things. We make this super ambitious list of all the things we're going to do. And then again, we don't do it. So the more you can actually enjoy the process, 
of the thing that you're doing, it dramatically increases the chances of you actually following through and getting the results that you need. There's no one perfect plan, especially a perfect plan that works for everybody. This thing may work for him. This thing may work for her. Awesome. It doesn't mean it's going to work for you because if you don't like the thing, you're just not going to stick to it. When people say, what's the diet that works? Well, it's the one that you stick to. What's the exercise plan that works? The one that you stick to. What's the marketing plan that works? The one that you stick to. What's the business plan that works? The one that you stick to. Consistency across everything. Success is habits. You want to have success in any area of your life. It comes down to habits. What are the habits that are going to help you actually accomplish your goals? The ones that you will stick to consistently. So when you follow the passion process, You figure out a list of all the ideas that you've got. Even if you haven't done them yet, what are the ideas you have for it? The theoretical ones. Then ask yourself, which would I enjoy the process of doing? Underline those and then pick your top three. And then start doing. Now you have an action plan. Now you have simplicity. Now you have clarity. It's a lot easier to stick to just three things and wake up and do those three things as opposed to building your list of 30, 40, 100, 3,000 to-dos that then you feel overwhelmed by and never take any action on. Success comes from habits. And simplicity in the habits means you will follow through. Now I've got some special bonus clips that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week? When you just watch a video and you get motivated, the sign says you have a 35% chance of actually following through. That's not good enough, Believe Nation. We need to take some action. But when you watch a video, you get motivated and you create a specific plan of action, that number jumps from 35% to 91% chance of you following through. And when you publicly commit to other people, like leaving a comment down in this video, your number jumps to 95% chance of you actually following through on the plan you set for yourself. So I wanna know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. Leave it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. Also, if you wanna have more self-confidence and self-belief, the sign says it can take up to 200 and 54 days of consecutive action for the habit to stick. That's what I want for you. So I've designed a custom free program where I'm gonna send you an unlisted video for the next 254 days to shift your confidence and belief forward. The link to join is in the description below. If everything has to work in two to three years, then that limits what you can do. If you absolutely can't tolerate critics, then don't do anything new or interesting. The number one thing that has made us successful by far is obsessive compulsive focus on the customer. Amazon, one of the things we try to do is have multiple paths to yes. And so here's here's a little thought experiment for you. If you are uh, a junior executive at Amazon, and if if Amazon did this in the typical kind of corporate hierarchy way, you had an idea. You need to get your boss to green light that idea. And then your boss's boss needs to green light that idea. And then your boss's boss's boss needs to green light that idea. There are probably five levels or more before that idea gets the go ahead. Assume instead that you're an entrepreneur with a startup company idea and you need venture capital. You go to Sand Hill Road and you go to the first venture capitalist and they tell you no. And you go to the second one, and they tell you no. Maybe your 20th one tells you yes. You got 19 no's and one yes, and you're still good to go. So that, that venture capital model is, there's multiple paths to yes. There were 20 people who could give you a yes, and it didn't matter how many gave you a no. So if you want innovative thinking, you have to think about how can we get, you want, high, you want a large number of high judgment people empowered to green light things. You want multiple paths to yes. And you want a system where as a junior Air Force officer with a good idea, the first five people tell me no and somehow I can still go pursue that idea. So you gotta figure out, that's an organizational um, uh, challenge that big organizations have to figure out a way to do. And by the way, I get, you know, the, what, the, it, uh, this happens all the time. I'll say I don't think that's a good idea, but somebody else will green light it. And I'm fine with that because usually 
the cost of the experiments is pretty small. Things only get expensive when they work, right? Once something works, you're like, whoa, we need to double down on that. Now, and then the spending can get heavy and then those become big consequential decisions and that's where the hierarchy and the using the judgment of the most senior people to me, this really helps. One of them is you have to have a willingness to fail. You have to have a willingness to be misunderstood okay. for long periods of time. If you do something in a new way, and I don't care what it is, people are initially going to misunderstand it relative to the traditional way. And they will, there'll be well-meaning critics who, you know, genuinely want the best outcome, but they're worried about this new way. And there'll also be, of course, self-interested critics who have a vested interest in the traditional, they have some profit stream tied to the traditional way. Um, but, but doing things, in, if, you want to, if you never want to be criticized, for goodness sake, don't do anything new. So it's, it's, it's okay though, if you have a willingness to be misunderstood for long periods of time, if you have a willingness to fail, then what you can do is you can ramp up your rate of experimentation. So successful invention, successful invention is inventions that customers care about. It's actually relatively easy to invent new things that customers don't care about. Um, but successful invention, uh, if you want to do a lot of that, you basically have to increase your rate of experimentation. And that you can think of as a process. How do you go about organizing your systems, your people, uh, all of your assets, your own daily life and how you spend time, how do you organize those things to increase your rate of experimentation? Because not all of your experiments are gonna work. My greatest, uh, 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 I would have such a good feeling if I could
legs crossed, back straight, eyes closed, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Feel that power of you controlling your breathing. That power that's available to you all the time, wherever you are in life. That power to reconnect to your greatest gift right now, your presence, your being. Your infinitely intelligent being. The same stuff we're all made of. And with that stuff that we're made of, we can control the most powerful supercomputer in the universe, your mind. But only you can do it. Only you can control your own mind. So let's do that right now. And let's see the future. Today, our time together, let's see ourselves doing the best we can on every single exercise and stretch. For this is not only the gym that we have available to us right now, in this space, wherever we are, but it is also the gym of life where we grow our minds all the time. Good morning, Determination. How is everyone doing today? Another great day. Wherever we are, today for myself, I'm indoors. Maybe you, yourself, are indoors as well, too. Wherever you are, let's go. Let's make this the best gym period we've ever had. It may not be exactly where we want to be. We may not be in school or at work where we really want to be. But wherever we are right now, let's do this to the best of our ability. Here we go, determination. Here we go. When I say go, we're going to start jogging on the spot for one minute. Ready and go. As always, we're thinking about our breathing, focused on our breathing. Feeling that power of us always being able to control our breath. Even when our heart starts beating faster, whether it's through exercise, whether it's through something stressful, something maybe we might be afraid of or we don't like. We get to control our breathing the same way we get to control our thoughts. And our thoughts affect our feelings. So if we can control our thoughts, we can control our feelings. Almost there, everyone. Almost there. Keep going. Keep going. Determination. Keep going. And stop. All right. You can walk on the spot or you can walk side to side as you recover your breathing. Always feeling that power of you controlling your breathing. This is the best. What we have right now, wherever you are, you've got your mind and your body in the gym of life. And you get to be your best right now. On whatever stretches, exercises we're about to do together. Here we go, here we go, determination. That's why I love gym, gym is the best. Roll your mind in the gym of life. Here we go. Let's do 10 shoulder rolls forward. Ready everyone, here we go. The best 10 shoulder rolls forward ever.
still controlling our breathing. Shoulders all the way up and around as high as we can towards our ears. And backwards. Again, feel the power of you controlling your body right now. In these simple movements, simple motions, you get to control your body. The way you control your mind. Same way. Alright, and let's do arm circles forward, everyone. Arm circles forward. Ten big ones forward. Feeling the joy of our arms moving through space. Alright, and backwards. All right, everyone, let's put our hands on our hips, bend the knees, and side stretch. There we go. Five on each side. All right, and let's twist our bodies. Here we go. Feet flat on the floor. Five on each side. Really thinking about what we're doing. Really trying to feel every part of our body as it's moving in space. Alright, good. Okay, let's do five push-ups together. Here we go. Five push-ups. Best five push-ups. Again, if you got to keep your knees on the ground, that's okay. Just do your best. Always. And five sit-ups. Excellent. And standing up. Five squats. Here we go. Body straight ahead. Looking straight ahead. All the way down. All the way up. All right. Let's do three lunges on each side. Here we go. Arms out. Still controlling our breathing. All right. And let's do a 10 second plank. Belly's knees off the ground. Again, feeling the joy of you pushing your body a little bit outside its comfort zone. Because you know that's where the growth is. Alright everyone, and standing up. Reach for the ceiling on your toes. Or the sky if you're outdoors. Today I happen to be indoors. If you are outdoors, reach for that sky. You're indoors reaching for that ceiling. We may not touch it yet or ever, but we're gonna reach, we're gonna strive. Just like we do in life, no matter what. Okay, now reach for your toes again. It's okay if you don't touch your toes, but keep your knees straight. Reaching for your toes, feeling the pull in the back of your leg, not the pain. Just a little bit of a pull. All right, come on up and let's balance. Grab one leg, find that balance, bend the other knee. Well done, well done, everyone. Keep going. Keep thinking about what you're doing right now. And switch. Again, feel the pull on the front of the thigh. Bend the other leg. Find that balance. If you lose it, just try to work hard to get it back and then hold it there. Excellent. All right, now let's hug our knee. Here we go, all the way up. And try to steady that other foot on the ground. Bend the knee if you have to and pull all the way up. Hold it for 10. Always working hard to find that balance. Where we balance our thoughts, our mind, Balance our bodies, wherever we are in space. All right, and switch. Just always think of safety too. Make sure you have enough space, clearance around you. In case you do lose your balance. Hold it there. Well, 
done. Okay, good. And let's sit down, everybody. And reaching for our toes, straight knees again. Reaching is what matters. If you don't get to your toes, that's okay as long as you're reaching. Feeling the pull on the back of your legs. Not the pain, just a little bit of a pull. Okay, V-shape with your legs. Now reach for the floor as far away from your body as you can. Hold it there for 10 seconds. Okay, now reach for one side and hold it there again. Always thinking about the moment, thinking about what we're doing right now. Experiencing the joy of being able to reach for something to help our bodies get better. And switch the other side. See, you can do this almost anytime, any place. You can work on your mind and your body wherever you go in life, in everything you do, not just in exercise and stretch. All right, here we go. And let's do feet together. Gently push your knees down with your elbows and hold it there for 10 seconds. If you feel your breathing, going on autopilot or becoming automatic again, take control of that. Deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Good. One leg forward, one leg back. Keep the knee on the ground. Go as far back as you can. Hold it there. Ten seconds. And switch to the other side. Knee on the ground. Go as far back as you can. Always remembering that you are the boss of your mind. And your mind is the boss of your body. That makes you the big boss. You get to control yourself. You get to use your determination no matter what. All right. And let's roll onto our bellies and push the floor. Looking up at the ceiling. Cobra stretch. Here we go. Hold it for 10 seconds. Feeling that nice stretch in our lower back, neck. Back of our arms. All right, and legs crossed. Back straight. Eyes closed. Taking deep, long breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And now, activating that third eye, that mind's eye. That we all have. We can't see it, but we know it's there. So use your mind's eye right now to see yourself doing the best you can today when that music goes on, on whatever two exercises, stretches you've chosen to do. For me, today I'm going to be holding the push-up position for one song, the first song, and then I'm going to be holding the squat position for the second song, as long as I can. And if I happen to let go or not be able to hold it, I'm going to continue on until that song's over. What about you? You can put on your own two songs today, and you can do your own exercises. But think about which exercises you're going to do right now, safely within the space you have. You can do what I'm doing. You can listen to what I'm listening to. Or you can choose your own. But whatever you do, Determine right now, see in your mind what you will do when that music goes on. Alright, determination, here I go, holding the push up position. And let's go, whatever you're doing, whatever you've decided, let's see it. Let's let's see your best. Here we go together. Let's go, determination, let's go. Looking forward to being better than we were last time, a little bit more than last time. 
see if I can hold it for the whole song. Let's see. Wasn't able to do it last time we did this together. Or the last time I did it on my own, but I'm gonna work at it right now. Because I love the process of trying to get better at something. Whether it's building strength in my body, building strength in my mind, working on creating nothing but positive images, thoughts, visions in my mind, working on being the best human being I can be. What about you? What is it for you? Whatever it is, just enjoy the process of learning, growing together, whatever we're doing. And sometimes we're going to feel that discomfort. Like right now, I can already feel my muscles already uncomfortable. <laughs> but then I can feel my determination saying, I get to determine whether I'm going to stop or keep going no matter what. You too. Let's go, determination. Let's go. get through the whole song, but I'm going to get right back at it again. Song's not over. You got to keep going. There we go. Shaking it up. Not being mad that we didn't get to where we want to be yet, but feeling happy that we get to go out of it again. Here we go. Always thinking about our breathing. Always thinking about finishing strong, no matter what. Always going right to the end, finishing what we set out to do, no matter what. Alright. Uh, got more in me, I know I got a little bit more. We gotta keep going. You too, whatever you're doing, keep going. Determination, keep going. Let's go. It's not over yet. The song's still playing. Focus on that breathing. Good air in. Bad air out. There we go. Another round. I love the process of building our true great self through exercising our bodies and our minds together. Oh, that's the next song, all right. Time for some squats, holding the squat position. What about you? What are you gonna do next? Let's go to termination, here we go, ready? You're doing what I'm doing, just try to keep your feet flat on the floor, looking straight ahead, going as far down as you can, your bottom towards the ground, and holding it there as long as you can until that music's done. Because our music, you know the truth, our music's never done, our energy, our determination is built to last to get through anything. Let's go, determination. Let's go. Sweating, that's good. Feel your body releasing some of that fluid, some of that old fluid and water. Make sure you drink lots of water when we're done. Make sure you always fill your body with good food. All right.
ends and never ends. That source, that oneness, that consciousness, that awareness. That we know is in all of us. That power to determine, to control our minds. You see, nobody else, nothing else in this universe can do what you do every day. In the gym of life, only you, human being, only you, infinitely intelligent being can do the ultimate. Only you can control your mind, your thoughts, and therefore your feelings. But it takes a lot of hard work. It takes, first of all, believing that you can do it. If you don't believe in yourself, your mind health, your chance at mind wealth is not possible. But that's not the way it was meant to be. You were born to win. Control over your mind, your thoughts. To have and be all you were meant to be. That means believing 100% in who you really are. And that is the key to your mind health and your mind wealth, your happiness, your freedom, your success, your infinite peace and love towards everything and anything. It's possible. It's all because of you, your determination. United with all of our determination creates that oneness, that consciousness, determination. And that's why I love you, determination, wherever you are. I miss you, I miss being in your presence, but here today, we united. We enjoyed this process fully. And the way we do or did this is the same way we can do anything, including being the best for all those around us, wherever we are, wherever we are right now. So keep going. Keep going, determination. Keep working on controlling your mind. Because that's for all your health, mind health, your happiness, your freedom, all your love, it can never be taken away. I love you, everyone. Have a great week. Until the next time. Welcome to Best Life 30, your 30 day journey to creating the best life possible for yourself. You can just watch this video or if you want to sign up for the whole series for free and get the bonus companion worksheets that go with each video, check the link in the description below. All right, so today is day seven and we're going to learn how you can develop the courage you need to win. I've learned that Courage is not some deep internal fortitude, that you don't dig down deep and find the courage, you know? That courage is external. Courage comes from the relationships we have with those around us. Um, a partner in business, a personal relationship, our team, right? That's why we want to build good cultures, because our team believes in us, which gives us courage to do difficult things. Um, uh, uh, so a, 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 um, a trapeze artist, a world famous trapeze artist would never try a brand new death defying act for the very first time without a net, right? 
Now all that courage, they do, they're, the, they're the world's greatest trapeze artists, but for the, they need something external before they do something very dangerous. Yeah. And it's the same for the rest of us. Exactly. So when we have someone who says, I believe in you, I got your back. Even if this doesn't work out, I'm here with you. I mentioned courage and I would, I would like to say something else about that. Finding courage in the leaders and in you who will become leaders. Uh, courage is the most impo important of all the virtues because without courage you can't practice any other virtue consistently. You see? You can't be consistently kind or fair or humane or generous. Not without courage because if you don't have it sooner or later you'll stop and say ah the threat is too much, the, the difficulty is too, too high, the, the challenge is, is too great. When I picked up your book, the thing I loved about it is the amount of effort that you've been through to give us, I'm sure this was suffering too, <laughs> like writing this book, the amount of effort that you've been through to actually give us detail right. on your life. We all have different things in our life that have scarred us. We want to act like those scars don't exist. So those scars, like, you know, if you go out and you get cut, that scar is gonna be there on your arm. You can go down and look at that cut and say, oh, or, or, or that scar and say, oh, that happened from, you know, I was in the kitchen or what happened. We have the same thing on our brain. I have all these scars on my brain from growing up, from, you know, being abused, from suffering through life, from having to learn disability, from stuttering, from having a, just a really bad childhood. And so all those memories, I had to cut open that scar and go into it, and that was a hard process for me to do. Not only was that a hard process for me to do, for me to have the courage to share that with people, you know, because I'm the so-called toughest man on the planet, so they think. So for me to break open that shell and, and tell people, hey, that wasn't always me. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to do, you know, it's hard to do. So it was, it, was a, it was a tough process. Throughout this journey, I started becoming this new person. Mm. I started creating this new person. And people started seeing me as this amazing superhero. In the back of my mind, I knew the real story. And I was like, man, one day you have to really share it. And I'm like, man, but do you have the courage? You know, like, it's great to live right here. I've established this, people think you're great. Just stay here, don't go back. Let's not go back. But the only way you can help people out is let them know that this is possible. So I had to go back and say, this is where I come from. Yeah. And where I come from is hell. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what if you could accomplish in the world today if you weren't afraid? If you weren't afraid of what people thought of you, said about you, whispered about you, what could you accomplish? A lot more than you've accomplished today. A lot more. Why do we care what people think? Why do we care what people say? And more importantly, why do we care what people whisper? Because we have no self-worth. We have next to little self-esteem. And we have no self-confidence. And how do we get that way? Yes, mommy and daddy. Life expands and contracts with courage. When was the last courage, uh, courage type thing that you did in your lifetime? Walk against the red light? Whisper that your spouse, your significant other is a bitch or a, a, a bastard. When was the last time you exhibited some courage? Some of you have to go back a long, long way. Some of you never. I said yesterday, I cannot believe that there are people in this audience that have never been spanked, never had a, a harsh word said to them by their parents, never got in a fight on the school grounds. I can't believe that. And you wonder why you are the, the way you are. Now, I'm not saying that um, being a high-performance person is beating the shit out of everybody, but it doesn't hurt. Here's a stat from, uh, from your show, and it says that the richest 85 people on this planet have as much money as the poorest, 3.5 billion. Yeah. yeah, right. That's on the planet, however. You know, that's... It's not far off in America. The... No, it isn't far off in America, but... We still, and we still here don't abandon the idea that it isn't finite. Yeah. 
It isn't finite if you were born. Where were you born? Me? Yeah. Baton yeah. Rouge, Louisiana. Baton Rouge General Rouge, Hospital. Baton Rouge. There you go. Louisiana. I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I had a long haul uh, from where I came from to here, but here we are. Right. So proof is in the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and here we sit at the dining table. But it's hard to, when you say that to some people, because they say, oh, there you go with a pull yourself up by the bootstraps thing, and you know, you're just being respectable. Not everybody can do that. Well, sh everybody can. Everybody doesn't. Courage, courage is the key to life itself. There are a lot of people who are born in situations where they say, well, I just, I'll never get out of this. So they won't. Uh, I say to people who say, well, I, I would like to have done so and so and so. So you could have done it. So, well, I couldn't get out of here. Man, the bus runs every day. <laughs> <laughs> You're exactly right. Yeah. You're, if, there, if, there, if you can conceive it in your mind. If you can think of it, you can do it. That's the human condition. If right. we can imagine it, we can do it. Right. And I think that's it, that the, the condition of each individual human. It's not enough to have a great idea and the focus and the conscientiousness to see it to fruition. You must have the strength and the resolve and the courage to pursue that idea even when the rest of the world thinks you're insane. Right? Time and time again, if you look at the stories of extraordinarily uh, important entrepreneurs, there is almost always a moment when they are the only ones who believe in the value of what they're doing. You know, I tell in my book the story of my book, David and Goliath, the story of um, Ingvar Kamprad, the guy who founds IKEA. And the crucial moment in the, in the story of IKEA is when he faces a boycott from the other furniture manufacturers in Sweden, and he's about to go out of business. And in desperation, he moves his operations across the Baltic Sea from Sweden to Poland and sets up shop in Poland. And that's what IKEA is. IKEA is essentially furniture ship flat made in Poland. That's the original elevator pitch for IKEA. What's interesting about that is he does it in 1961. At the height of the Cold War, at a time when East and West, communist world and free world are closer to outright war than at any other time in history, a guy living in the West, Sweden, crosses the pond to Poland, the Iron Curtain, and sets up shop. You cannot imagine what a controversial move that was. That's like, that would be like Walmart opening operations in North Korea. Literally, it's on that level of kind of eyebrow raising, you've got to be kidding me, who is this guy kind of thing. But he does it and he persists and he turns his back on all those critics. Why? Because he is a deeply disagreeable person didn't need people to agree with him, right? And that's how he's able to build IKEA into this extraordinary runaway success story. That's very hard to do. As human beings, we are hardwired to want the approval of our peers. I always tell Figured people, what you don't know can be your greatest asset if mm, you let it, because absolutely. it ensures you're going to do it differently. Absolutely. And when I landed Neiman Marcus, all these people came up to me and said, I have been doing this for seven years, 10 years, five years. How did you land Neiman Marcus? And I said, I called them. And they just looked at me and I was like, why, what do you do? They're like, well, I go to trade shows and I set up my booth and I'm waiting for the Neiman Marcus buyer to come by. And we've been doing it every year for seven years. I didn't even know there were trade shows. Wow. So sometimes just not knowing how it's supposed to be done you have to have the courage, though, mm. to, to say, even though I wasn't trained in this, because a lot of people think, well, I didn't go to school for this, so how could I possibly know? But you know, it's inside of you. If you actually believe something in a meeting, and it might be against the grain, saying it in a respectful way matters, because in three years, when it becomes true, the other seven people in that room will remember that, and that may lead to the growth in your career that you're looking for. People think they grow in their career by staying within the framework of their organization. They're actually quietly, subconsciously ruining their career if they don't agree with the point of view. And I know for fact, because the best part of can for me, hands down, is two, three o'clock in the morning, when people have so much rosé in them, they start talking truth. I know for...
I know for a fact that there's a lot of people that have strategies or executions they don't personally believe in. It's just a framework of where the margin is in their company or what they have to be held accountable to a bonus. And that's a tough life uh, in, in some way. I mean, this is only just work. There's much bigger things going on. But I will say being on the record in a room respectfully of what you actually believe, brave, is a very, very good idea. And honestly, back to brave, there's so much content, there's so much going on in the world. What I think this room believes and defines as brave is actually the only prayer to break through consumer attention to make something happen in your business. After Titanic, you, you had so many interesting career choices, I thought. I mean, really interesting, much smaller movies. They must have come to you and said, do this, do that, do that. And the choices you made were really terrific little movies that are not the obvious choices that you would make after that kind of a success. Well, you know, Pete, I had to be really brave. Yeah. You know, I did have to be, I did have to be really brave because it was a moment in time and suddenly I was offered quite big films. I mean, suddenly yeah. a lot came my way quite quickly. And I mean, I can't even talk about the size of these paychecks. I just... <laughs> And I, and I just remember thinking, I'm not, I'm honestly not ready. I don't, I don't, I, I still don't feel like I know how to do this. Yeah. I don't know how to act properly. I need to learn more. I can't, I can't do it. I'm not ready for that. Yeah. Um, and also, I wasn't ready to be that famous. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like that feeling. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I really didn't. And I, and I knew that I wasn't prepared to fuel it. I didn't want to follow suit with something else that was, and nothing was going to top Titanic, nothing. Right. And um, I was just very lucky at the time, I had some very, very good friends around me who would just say, you've got to, you've got to make sure that you, you're doing what is making you happy. And at the same time, it was, of course, very difficult to be turning down gigantic films yeah. because I was so lucky to be asked to do them in the first place. Yeah. And I hadn't auditioned for those. <laughs> I mean, my God, I couldn't believe that. They this just call you up. <laughs> Come yeah, and do it. Yeah. And so it was, a, it was, I mean, it sounds terribly sort of ungrateful, but... I just knew that I needed to look after my desire to learn more, and 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 also I wasn't I, I wasn't very experienced. I needed to be out in the world, and 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 some of the films that I was able to do after Titanic, like like Hideous Kinky, Holy Smoke, for example, yeah. they took me into the world. You know, they took me to Irish. Morocco, into the Medina great. in Marrakesh, and you know, off into the Flinders Ranges in the outback in Australia, and. You know, so I, I, I was living, I was living a, a, a life that was my life, my choices, yeah. um, and not something that everyone else was saying to me, are you crazy? Are we, are, what are you, what are you, you know, are you crazy? <laughs> you've, got, you've got to do this and you have to do that. And you have to, I was like, well, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I can't, I'm not, I'm not ready. Wow. Um, yeah, and it was quite, I had to be quite, I did have to be quite brave. One of the biggest and most surprising lessons I learned on this journey was that I just had this assumption that all these people I looked up to were fearless. You know, Elon Musk or Bill Gates, we just assume they, you know, have no fear and it's how they achieve what they've done. But what I've learned is that not a single one of them were fearless. They actually were filled with tremendous amount of fear. Mm. So while they weren't fearless, they did have tremendous amounts of courage. And the difference between fearlessness and courage is that fearlessness is jumping off of the cliff without thinking. Courage is acknowledging your fear, analyzing the consequences, and deciding you still care so much about it, you're gonna take one step forward anyway. The very minute that you decide upon something, you know that's what you want, you know you're going to do it, all of these negatives that have been bothering you, they pick up their baggage and get out. They just move out. They can't live in a positive mind. Can you imagine a negative frame of mind and a positive frame of mind occupying the same space at the same time? Could you imagine that? No, you can't, because it can't be done. And did you know that the slightest bit of a, a negative and mental attitude is sufficient to destroy the power of prayer? Did you know that the slightest bit of a, of a negative mental attitude is sufficient to destroy your plan, whatever it is you're doing, carrying out your definiteness of purpose? You have to move with courage, with faith, with determination in connection with carrying out your definiteness of purpose. I initially was not trying to do music at all. I mean, I came 
to the United States. My family came and my parents made that choice. My mom um, came over to Miami and her main thing was just like, we don't have money to get you into college. So you're gonna have to get a scholarship and you're gonna have to study your butt off. And so that was always my main focus was just, I was like a book nerd. I was just like studying, studying, studying. So I didn't really think of it as a plausible thing, even though it was always my escape. You know, I would always sneak off into my room when my parents went to Walmart and I would just like sing. Um, wow. But yeah, I definitely didn't think of it as a career. That was literally just like five seconds of bravery that changed my life where I decided to, you know, try out for a show. We asked Camila, what do you want for your quinceañera party? And she told me, I want you to go with me to an audition. What do you do when you're not singing? I would love to say something interesting, but all I do is sing karaoke and watch like One Direction videos. If you think your life is complete, then I suggest that you're an ass because tomorrow always has a great opportunity in it. Your life is not complete until you close your eyes. So when you say somebody who's in a job they hate would love to be able to do this, my comment is why the hell are you in a job you hate? Don't you have the courage to leave it? So you're in a job you hate, you're doing nothing to change it, but you'd like better. Sometimes you have to they, do but better. But they have mouths to feed. I, sometimes I get it. But what were the things about you? Not saying what we can... Spe even, listen, we'd have to go over those specific cases, I think, and really get into each person to break them. But what do you think that were the things about you? One of it is you always had your eyes open to tomorrow and new opportunities. What were some of the other things as part of your personality? For Because I've there aren't many people like you, but I've seen and I'm studying more and more people where amazing things are happening at 55 and 60 and putting them on life journeys that they never thought thought they were going to have and I'm and I'm seeing that you guys have a lot of the similar attributes but I, what do you think what was it about you John courage courage you know the first time I went and shot a pilot for bar rescue it was really hard you think it's easy to scream at people on national television to insult people on national television to call you a jerk challenge your marriage challenge your challenge your integrity challenge your professionalism that's hard that's not who I am I don't wake up and embarrass people in front of their friends, right. in front of their family. Bar rescue is the hardest work I have ever done. The courage that it takes for me to go out there and do these things. Single biggest mistake I've made in my career was not spending money. It's what put me in a position to be able to buy real estate, because I had money, but I had to buy the real estate. I had to use the money. Brad Lee made a comment the other day about money. Money is not to be saved and hoarded. Like, like it's no good if you don't use it. This is the problem with Bitcoin. It, it, how, when, do, when do I transact with it, right? I'm sitting on a million dollars worth of Bitcoin right now. I can't get rid of it fast enough. I can't go buy stuff with it. So until that, that, that situation is resolved, right? It's why people don't hoard gold anymore. You don't keep gold because you can't exchange it. Money is to be used. For those of you out there that are like complaining about the cost of anything, the truth is that's what that money's for. The only thing, the only purpose money has is to be used. And, and I was scared that I couldn't produce more money. So every time I spent money, I complained about it. Today, I'm like, that's the biggest mistake I ever made. Should have been spending more money. Uh, it wouldn't have take, taken me 30 years. In the first five years, I should have borrowed money I didn't have, and I should have spent money that I did have, and I should have gone into debt to do it, to get my brand out there, to get it known. The mattress guy in your town did it, the car guy in your town did it. Whoever spent the most money, whoever, whoever put it all out there all the time, every day on every TV, radio, and the internet, wins the battle. It's not the prettiest guy, okay? It's not, it's the guy that out advertises that outspends you. It takes courage to make money. I think the courage uh, to be really open about those, you know, some of the things I've been through in the past all comes from experiencing those things. And when I was going through, say, you know, when I was going through some of these things, I felt so alone. And a lot of girls or people do. You feel like nobody can understand you because a lot of these problems deal with like isolating yourself and feeling alone. And one of the things that really helped me have the courage to change was that I realized that I'm not alone. Like there's actually people who understand me and there's people who have actually overcome this and that gave me hope. And so that's why I really strive to give a positive message of hope about like, you know, if, you, if you're not happy with the person you are today, I 100% I believe that you can change. And um, so that's what I like to hopefully share with young girls. And I would say that's what gave me the courage to, to share. 
nobody has ever achieved